Shalom, shalom, Mishpachah, shalom. So it has been a minute since I posted a video, um, but I have quite a few updates. Y'all has been moving. And so as you can see by the title of this video, this is my journey to modesty. So before I hop into the video, I want to go ahead and start in prayer. So I'm going to bow my head for a word of prayer. And if you are not driving or you're in a position to, I'd ask that you pray with me as well. Avia, Father, I thank you, Father, for giving me this testimony to be able to share. Um, Father, I just pray and ask that you speak through me, Father, that you move through me and lead and guide me through your Ruach HaKodesh, Father. Give me the words to say, Father, and help this video to reach the people that it needs to reach in the way that it needs to reach them, Father. You get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise from this message and this testimony, Father. I thank you, Father, for um, the mighty work that you're doing in the earth realm, Father, and how you are preparing your bride, Father. I praise you, Father. I give you all reverence and all honor. Take over this video, Father, and have your way. In the mighty and matchless name of your son, Adoni Yahusha Hamashiach, I pray. Hallelujah, 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 and amen. Thank you, Father. So, um, I have some notes. So, I'll be looking down at my phone if you see me looking down. And I'm just going to talk about my modesty journey um, everything from the prayer that I prayed that really um, catapulted the journey all the way down to um, my like my hair, my head covering, um, my face. Um, and when I say face, I mean like I stopped wearing makeup, um, everything, right? So it's going to be pretty much a, a head to toe journey. When I say head to toe, I don't mean anything vulgar. I just mean like hair and face and head covering and, you know, the the, the clothing that I wear, all of those types of things. Um, I'm also going to talk about taking care of yourself. And so a lot of times when we hear that, you know, someone is modest, people think, OK, those are those women that, you know, don't wear makeup and they like cover their hair and they're shame faced and you know like people think that women who are modest not everybody but some people think that they're like just like I don't know like just they don't take care of themselves but that's like very much so the opposite because being modest actually requires you to take care of yourself naturally right Whereas you would normally hide behind makeup, now you've got to take care of your skin so that it's naturally radiant, right? Um, you got to take care of your hair so that you're wearing your own beautiful hair, right? And so it's it's really a beautiful thing, right? So I'm going to talk about, you know, what it means to actually take care of yourself and emphasize the importance of that. And then I'm going to close out with a couple of comments um, keenly the importance of not forcing um, the modesty journey on yourself or anyone else. And um, I'm going to share a little bit of a backstory behind one of the reasons why I say that. But one thing I will say is that it is important to pray to Yah and ask for him to show you um, through his wisdom and to give you the revelation of, you know, why modesty matters and to show you like what pleases him and what doesn't please him. So don't be one of those people that, you know, says, well, he didn't show me, but you weren't seeking him out for him to show you. Make sure that you pray and you you ask him to show you. And if you're really seeking him, he'll show you. So here we go. So the prayer that I pray, the prayer that I pray. So um, the prayer that I pray that really catapulted or really like um, started the journey to modesty was that I asked y'all to show me anything about my life, anything about like me, period, that does not please him, that doesn't look like him and to clean me up from it. And so that's pretty much the prayer that I prayed. And so this video is about modesty in terms of like modesty in the heart, which it starts with the heart. It talks about modesty in terms of like clothing and appearance, 
But he's also, because of that prayer, starting to show me things that I didn't even realize and that I thought were like acceptable that that weren't like certain places that I shouldn't be eating at. Like if you walk into a place and they have like, you know, pretty much like an altar of like other gods, like some of these other restaurants, even like some Thai restaurants, then you shouldn't be eating at those places. Right. So he's showing me those things that I used to normally like not even think about. Um, that's a whole nother video in terms of all of those other things he's showing me. But this this is about the lens of modesty. And it's been a very quick and beautiful journey. He's still showing me things, but I'm going to talk through the things that he's showing me between September and November. So just in three short months, um, he has dressed me in an entirely new way. My father dresses me. So... As you can see, I have a head covering on. Yes, yes, yes. And um, I was going to talk about that last because that was the most recent thing. But I'll go ahead and um, talk about that first and my testimony of how I started to um, head cover when praying and prophesying and reading scripture. So... Um, one day in my prayer closet, um, as I was about to go into my prayer closet, I was, I had an umption to cover my head. And so I was like, okay, so I covered my head. I got a, um, I got a head wrap and I covered my head similar fashion to like what you see me, um, wearing now. And, um, when I covered my head and began to pray, I felt it was like I felt a new layer, a new level, a new level of like, like, like covering and power and also like submission. And it was just like, it's really, I don't have the words to explain it. I did see another sister who had a similar experience the first time she had covered, but it was just like, I, I really can't explain it. It was just like, it was just a new level that was added into my prayer time. And um, my submission to Yah. And so after that, I was like, I'm definitely covering my head every time I pray, every time I read scripture, every time I prophesy. And so from there, I started taking, um, you know, a head cover with me, like, you know, wherever I would go, pretty much just have one handy. Um, in the wintertime, like it's not too bad because, you know, sometimes like you also have your scarf. But I made sure I had one with me. And so um, one day after I prayed, I was coming out of my prayer closet about to get ready for work. And my prayer closet is situated like in the, um, the, 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 the bathroom. And then so I opened my door and I could see the mirror. Usually I just keep walking, try to hurry up and get ready. But I came out and I could see the mirror. And I'm walking past the mirror and I'm like, who this? Right? I felt the most beautiful I have ever felt in my life. And I'm not saying that to like to just exaggerate or to be vain or any of that, but I looked in the mirror and I felt so authentically beautiful with my head covered. And I'm just like, wow. So I'm like, I'm going to work like this today because I had on this beautiful sort of long dress, um, the dress up to like just before my ankles. And then I had just bought the day before and then I had my head covered and I'm like, I just felt so beautiful. Um, I didn't have on any makeup. I didn't have on any jewelry. Um, like nothing else. Just it was like what I said to myself that day, I said my father dressed me. My father dressed me and I felt so proud and so beautifully adorned. And so I did go to work that way that day for the first time with my head covered. And um, yeah, so that's how I started actually like covering my head in prayer. And then I also started to, you know, wear head coverings when I would get out, go out places. I don't wear them all the time when I go places. Um but I do make sure that I have a head covering with me. 
Um, but I'm starting to more and more wear head coverings when I go out places because it's so royal and queenly. And I notice the the amount of respect that I get when I go places and, you know, I have on like modest clothing and I have my head covered. It's regal. It's royal. It's just heads turn. And I just, you know, it's, it's, you get so much like respect. Right. And so I am starting to wear my head coverings more when I go out places, but this is like very fresh for me. And anyone who knows me and knows me well knows that this transformation that I'm discussing in this video is only something that Yah is doing. Like it's not, uh, my only role in this is obedience. My only role in this is choosing to be obedient to what Yah is showing me and to heed the desires he's placing inside of me and to be obedient when he takes away desires from me. My only role is obedience. He gets all the glory because um, like I said, I used to, <laughs> I had all the outfits, right? I mean, I used to model. And so for me, like seeing these changes that are happening so quickly, it's only him. So I'm going to read the scripture about head covering. And this was a scripture that I debated quite a bit. Um, just because I just wasn't sure, like, I just, I don't know. I just kind of went back and forth on it. Like, do I need to always have my head covered and all that? I went back and forth on it like a year ago uh, when I first started head covering, then I stopped. And so what I want to emphasize here is that anytime that you read scripture, anytime you even go to open your, 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 your Sefer or your Bible or your hallelujah scriptures, pray first. You need the Ruach of Yah. You need his revelation. You need him to give you revelation and to, to guide you and show you how he wants you to understand the scriptures you're reading and not just go to the scriptures and read them on your own um, without his his wisdom, the wisdom that comes from him uh, leading and guiding you and his ruach guiding you. So when I first started head covering like a year ago and I stopped, I had no revelation. Um, I really hadn't gone too deeply into scripture. I just... I'll tell that story at the end, but um, it was more so like something I just, because of a, <laughs> I'll tell that story at the end. I'll tell that story at the end, but it's important to seek out Yah when you're reading scripture so that he can give you the revelation because without revelation, I would not be covering my head. I wouldn't. Revelation and scripture. So it says in 1 Corinthians 11, 4 through 13, every man praying or prophesying, cover, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as, she, as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if she be ashamed, but if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. OK, so. I could continue to read it's like a couple of more verses, but pretty much it talks about a woman having her head covered when she's praying and prophesying and a man uncovering his head when he's praying and prophesying because the man is it says that the man is the head of the woman, right? And so out of submission to the umbrella of Yah and then, you know, our husbands and then um, us as women, we're supposed to be covering our head, right? And so I really like, I don't want to say wrestle with that scripture, but I really went back and forth on it. And, and I just, I, like I said, I had a revelation of it. And so now Yah has given me revelation and also an experience to show me the importance of covering my head in prayer and prophesying and reading scripture and also the beauty of covering my head and how much like respect I, you know, I get when I go places and how regal it is and how it pleases him. Right. And so you need revelation because apart from that, sometimes um, we can literally throw ourselves into bondage when we just try to do something especially if it's cultural and we don't really like, we haven't gotten, um, we haven't sought y'all out on it. So revelation is important. Okay, so next I'm gonna go to my hair. Uh, 
as you can see, I have my hair. Um, I actually have locks, which I love. They're so beautiful, also very convenient. So um, I would say like maybe July, June, July time frame. Yeah, I started taking away my desire to add anything to my hair in terms of like weave, um, crochet hair, any of that. So I used to get years ago, I used to get sew-ins. I used to wear, you know, weaves. I used to do the braided extend braids with the extensions and all of that. So I'm not speaking from the perspective of someone who doesn't have experience in that area. Um, I did learn that the hair that comes to the wig markets, the hair that, you know, a lot of Hebrew or black women put in their heads is actually sacrificed, right? And so you putting that in your head is not good. And so that was pretty alarming to me. But even then, that information was given to me um, secondhand. It wasn't something that I personally can remember going to read myself. And so um, about maybe a year ago for a while, like I just didn't wear any type of like crochet or any of that in my head. Then I, you know, kind of started back because it was convenient. But um, I got to the point around like June, maybe of this year, where maybe June, July, where like I became radically, even more radically than I already had been, radically obedient. And when I felt a conviction from y'all about something, it was like, I'm just not going to mess with it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be obedient to it. So Literally, I would go into a wig market to look for some crochet and I would leave out with maybe like, I don't know, some edge control or some grease or something, but I could not bring myself to buy that hair anymore. Like I just could not bring myself to do it. And um, so he started working on me uh, a little bit of maybe like back during the later part of the summer. And so right before I started a new role, I was looking for like what to do with my hair that would be convenient and, um, you know, save me some time. And so I started like I've been doing like micro twists in my hair even before I got locks, just small twists in my hair. Um, I've also done like small braids in my hair with my own hair. And so I was considering doing that, but was trying to save time. So. I contemplated getting crochet in my hair, but I was like, you know what, at this point, like, I'm not going to mess with it. And when I say crochet, like, you braid your hair down and then you crochet, like, weave into your hair. That's what crochet is. But I was just like, I'm not even going to play with y'all. I'm not. I'm not. Like, because I don't. I just have gotten to that point. Right. So at any rate. I ended up doing some mini twists in my hair and I got locks. Um, I started my locks a month later. Uh, with braids, small braids in September. But he just pretty much took away my desire to wear weave in my head and also gave me a strong conviction concerning like adding hair to my head. He made it so that like it felt like disgusting to add someone else's hair that I don't know where it came from to my head. So for me, what you'll see in this video is a trend of him taking away the taste out of my mouth and taking away desires for certain things um, that don't please him, just like I had prayed about. So that's the testimony of my hair. Um, it's locking now. I love it. It's beautiful. It's convenient. I don't really use a lot on my hair. I have a spray that I made, and the spray contains um, like filtered water, rose water, olive oil as a carrier oil tea tree oil, tea tree essential oil, peppermint essential oil, and lavender essential oil. And that's what it has in it. I put that on my hair most days to keep it, you know, nourished and moisturized. I also have a um, oil that I use on my scalp. It's from Miel, M-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And that's about it. So... Um, the next thing is my face. So this one, this was the one that um, brought me to tears, actually. So um, I don't wear any makeup, as you can see. 
none. Like I don't wear any foundation. I don't wear any eyebrow makeup. None of that. And that's all y'all's doing. All y'all's doing. So the weekend of my born day, which is September, in early September. Um that's when the the that's when I stopped wearing makeup. So it wasn't on my born day, but it was the weekend of. And let me say this about born days real quick, because it doesn't warrant an entire video for me. I'll just say this. I do believe that you should acknowledge the day that you were born. I do believe you should. I don't believe that you should celebrate it in a pagan way of go get a cake and put a bunch of candles on it and declare that it's your birthday month and your birthday week. I don't believe in that. That's very much so pagan. I don't believe in that at all. But when we look at the scriptures and we see how all of these great men in scriptures, we see how many years they lived. Obviously, there was a way of keeping account of how many years you live. And it's important to acknowledge that. And so for me, this past year, um, for the first time, I actually learned about the pagan history of birthdays. I decided to I still want to take the day off because it was I don't know, I just really felt like strongly led to take the day off. But I just spent the day in like praise and worship and a lot of time in scripture because I had more time since I was off that day and um, just relaxing, soaking in the sun, you know, eating well, eating good food that evening um, and just like relaxing and praise and worship, which is likely how I'll spend the year, spend that day every year. Um, there were no candles, no cake, nothing like that involved. And I had a fellowship with my family and that's it. Um, but I do believe you should acknowledge that Yah has blessed you with another year, that you have breath in your body, that there's still purpose inside of you and things that he needs you to accomplish. You should acknowledge that with praise and worship, not in a pagan way. So just want to say that. So that weekend um, was very revelatory on a number of levels. And I remember maybe like two days after my um my born day, I went to the park, which I like to do sometimes. And when I went, I didn't like, you know, do anything special to my face. Um, I didn't really wear foundation or like a lot of makeup, but my eyebrows. I always had to have my eyebrows filled in, like always had to. You weren't going to see me in the morning when my eyebrows filled in. I wasn't going nowhere unless my eyebrows were filled in. And so when I left the house that day, uh, I was like, I'm good. I don't need to put my eyebrow makeup on. And so I went, went to the park, had a great time, came back, you know, went to sleep, got up the next morning. I was headed to a get together. And so, you know, I got myself ready, washed my face and I looked in the mirror. And for the first time ever, you know, without me having on eyebrow makeup, I was like, wow. And I just had a whole moment. And I was like, you're so naturally, and this is not vanity. I'm just looking at myself kind of like I'm beginning to see myself the way y'all sees me. And I'm like, you're beautiful naturally without this eyebrow makeup. And so I was just having this whole moment and it was just like, like I was seeing myself through the lens in which y'all sees me. And um, but then I had a moment of doubt and I thought about men in their faces and what people would say if they see me without, you know, having any makeup on. And so I went for um, I went to get my uh, the, like the powder, not like the whole pencil and the light, but just like a little bit of powder to fill them in. And for the first time ever. Right. I felt. Like, ew, why am I adding this stuff to my face, right? I had the revelation of why am I adding something to what has already been made complete? It's kind of like if a, a, a artist paints a picture and you go back and you're like, the artist paints a the picture, they're ready to put it into the gallery for his debut. And someone else sees it and just adds some polka dots to it and says, okay, well, I think it's good now. How do you think the artist of that portrait would feel with you adding those polka dots to a picture that's already complete. 
And so for the first time, I feel like, why am I adding this stuff to my face? Like, ew. And so within less than two minutes, it was probably a minute and 30 seconds, I, I wiped it off my face. I was like, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And I just started crying. And it was like, not tears of like, I'm sad, but tears of like, just joy of like, Yah has literally taken my desire away to wear makeup. He's taken away from a place of like not wanting to add to myself and also a place of like energetically, like if I were to go try to put some on that, it would drain me. That's Yah's doing. He's taken away my desire to wear that. And so with the eyebrow makeup, obviously came foundation, which I was really not wearing because I take it care of my skin. But I was like, I'm just not. That desire was it was gone. So no eyebrow makeup, no foundation, no blush, none of that. Just done with it, right? He took away all those desires pretty much. It was like a ripple, ripple, ripple effect. And um, from there, it was jewelry. And so um, I haven't really like worn jewelry much since. I just like it was like the desire just it just was a ripple effect. It just waned from me, and that's. For anyone who knows me, I have like two jewelry boxes and then I also have the little fold out jewelry thing that I could travel with. So I have a lot of jewelry. So this was not just Melanie deciding I'm just not going to wear jewelry. I just want to make a statement. This is Yah's doing. I just need to be very clear so that he gets all the glory and honor from this testimony. This is Yah's doing. Now, have I worn jewelry, worn jewelry since? I did wear at um, a Sukkot gathering. Um, a gold headpiece jewelry and also some gold earrings, but then I took them off after the chimney as a red um, celebration, and that that was it, right? Uh, so it was just like a ripple effect, and then like the color, like the stained makeup, I that just was like it just all was like boom one, right? It was very radical. Um, and I just chose to obey, right? So I still do moisturize my face. I use jojoba oil on my skin, on my face. And I also do use um, a clear, like a, a lip balm or a lip gloss, as you can see that I have on now. So I don't mean just like be ashy and like don't look nice. You're still going to look nice and keep yourself up. But you don't have to use makeups. You don't have to add to yourself to be beautiful. Yah has already made you perfect and complete, right? And because he's preparing his bride, when we, you know, when we when we meet him at his return, it's not that we're going to like go grab our our makeup and put our makeup on and all that stuff like that. He wants us in his image and his likeness, the way that he um, created us. I, I feel like he's, I strongly believe that he's restoring us to that. And it's a scripture that I go back to quite a bit and have gone back to quite a bit in this journey. So um, before I go any further, I'm going to read that scripture. And that's Genesis 127. So Yah created man in his own image. In the image of Yah created he him. Male and female created he them. And so anytime that I, I feel, I don't really get discouraged because I'm just like, my father dressed me like what, how much better does it get, right? My father dresses me. My father is responsible for like my appearance, right? So it's very rare that I feel any type of way, but the first like maybe a week or two when I would like, you know, look at my eyebrows and stuff at first, I had to really remind myself that this is y'all's doing. And that no matter what anybody says, I have to stay firm because this is what my father is doing. My father in the Shamayim, my heavenly father. And so I can't disobey him. And so I had to remind myself that I'm in his likeness and his image. And you, if, let me just make it real for a second. Like, if you're in Yah's likeness and his image, why would you ever want to, like, not be in his likeness and image? And why would you ever want to, like, add to that you know like people go and get all these types of surgeries done and add all these layers of makeup to their face but like apart from all of that like underneath all of that you're his image and his likeness like it don't get no better than that like the creator of of all 
the the trees and the stars in the sky and the the moon and the the lilies in the field with all their splendor and I mean everything and he created you to look the way that you look you gotta embrace that so I, I go to I go back to that scripture like quite a bit and it's very encouraging to me right and very fundamental so Yeah. So after that, um, y'all have been working on me concerning like pedicures, manicures, not pedicures per se, but painting my toes and nails. Right. So when the pandemic hit, I was like, ain't nobody about to be touching on my feet, touching on my hands. None of that. So growing up, I always painted my own nails and my own toes manicured them, pedicured them, um, was so good at it that I would do my uh, my, si my younger sister's toes and my mom's um, toes as well. Manicure them, pedicure them, paint them and everything like that. Do designs and all of that. Really good at it. Never thought about actually going to someone to pay them to do that. But when I went out into the workforce, um, it was something that I started doing. I started going like every two weeks to get my, my toes done, my nails done, like I started getting acrylic, SNS, all of that. And so, um, after the, the ripple effect was like, after like, you know, he took away desire for like makeup and um, all those types of things. It was nails and, and, and you know, toes. And the beautiful thing was he already had started working on me. So it wasn't a difficult transition. Um, and I also already like had really stopped going to those places because one, it was expensive to go like maintain that every two weeks. And then two, you know, the pandemic hit. And then three, like I knew how to do it myself already. So I had really been painting my nails and toes throughout the pandemic myself. But like I mentioned, the ripple effect was like, okay, so those nails, those toes, like, it's not a natural thing for you to be painting your nails and toes. And it's, it's crazy how many things we become accustomed to in our society that when people aren't doing them, you look at them like something's wrong or weird. But like, who told you to paint your toes and paint your nails and put paint on your face? Like, who told you that that's the standard of beauty? Anyway, that's a whole nother revelation. But, um, so I was like, okay, cool, you know, because I mean, with me, like, you know, like doing stuff a lot with my hands and washing dishes and all of that, sometimes the paint come off. So it's the very minimum. I always keep my nails very neat and clean because I bake and I cook and I, you know, um, I sell baked goods as well. So I keep my nails short because it's nasty to me personally to have like long nails and you cooking and all that stuff like that. So I manicure my own nails. I keep them trimmed and short and healthy. Um, I take care of them myself. Every now and then I'll put some clear nail polish on them and that's about it. The same thing with my toes. I manicure them. I, excuse me, I pedicure them. I keep them cut, keep them clean, keep them very neat, put clear nail polish on them. But because I have been painting them so often, I had a um, sort of a stain um, and nothing like nasty or disgusting, but I had sort of like a stain on um, one of my like big toes from always having them painted. And so I kept painting them to like cover the stain. And uh, so I was a little bit kind of like, how's it going to work out when the summer comes? Because I'm going to definitely be wearing sandals. And when I tell you, y'all is so good when you obey him. So. Maybe like three weeks after I took off my last um, set of like nail polish, right? My toes, I've always had like really nice, pretty full toes. But when I tell you like that stain that had been there for almost a year went away. And now that toe and all of my toes are just as clear and pretty as my nails. All of them. Like, just a pleasure to look at. And I'm like, wow. Like, within three weeks. And I had that going on for, like, a whole year. 
that that one little like stain from always polishing my nails. And so it's amazing how like y'all naturally um, adorns us and takes care of us when we're obedient to him and we take care of our, our bodies. And so the last thing in terms of how y'all has dressed me that I want to cover is clothing. So I'm going to read the scripture Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. And it reads, the woman shall not wear that which pertains to unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do are abomination unto Yahuwah thy Elohim. And so this one was, uh, like I said, you need to read the word with revelation of the Ruach HaKodesh and ask Yah to give you the wisdom and understanding every time you read. Because if you don't and you leave it to your own interpretation and your own understanding, like our understanding is flawed, right? So, and so our understanding is flawed and it does send a word for us to lean not until our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge Yah and he will direct our path. And so we're just reading that scripture by itself um, I was like, well, I'm good because I don't shop in the men's section. I shop in the women's section. My skinny jeans are women's skinny jeans. My shirts are women's shirts. So like, I'm good. Okay. And that was it. You know, that was it for me. And, um, I, it wasn't until one day where I was in my prayer closet, all of this stuff has happened in the same mirror and same prayer closet, which is so interesting. So, um, like from the makeup that was in that mirror, that's right outside my prayer closet, the, the head covering, all of that. And so I was in my prayer closet one morning and I looked up at a pair of pants that I had picked out to wear that day. And for some reason, they look so weird to me for the first time. Like I'm looking at these pants. It's like, it's like y'all is taking off the shackles off my eyes for so many things. And so I'm looking at this pair of pants and it looks so weird. Like this, 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 this garment that's split in the middle and I'm about to put that on. And I, I just could not understand. Right. When I tell you he, the motif is that the stuff is happening in my prayer closet, in that mirror and that desires are being taken away and desires are being added. That's the commonality through this. And so I'm looking like, Okay, so maybe I'll just wear a dress today. But it was kind of cool outside because, you know, it was like the beginning of fall. And so I'm like, hopefully it's not too cold. But so I put on the dress and I put on some stockings, like some sheer um, stockings. And I went outside and I'm like, wow, it's beautiful out here. So I wore that dress and I got so many compliments on the dress. I felt, you know, I felt very good, very feminine. And the notion of pants being an outer garment just still felt so weird to me for the first time ever. And mind you, like I'm somebody who likes to work out, you know, somebody who likes to wear a good pair of jeans and like it felt weird, like just woke up and it just felt weird. And like I said, this is this is y'all taking away these desires from me. And so uh, the next day I got up and I found another dress to wear and I wore that dress. And then so I just kept wearing dresses and skirts and then I was like okay I probably need to buy some more like you know dresses and skirts but I'll just take my time just maybe one a month buy something new but he just lovingly he's he's lovingly taking my desires away for things that don't look like him and in other areas he's lovingly convicting me he didn't push me he didn't like just like throw me into it. He's lovingly showing me the things that um, please him and the things that don't please him. Yeah, so he's just um, been lovingly showing me the things that please him and the things that don't please him. And it's just been such a beautiful process. And so, you know, um, I remember like some time ago seeing testimony videos of women who wear you know, only skirts and dresses. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> yeah, I, I was not there yet. And I looked at them kind of like, 
I don't know, you know? And so, like, it's amazing how in Yah's own appointed time, he can help you. He can cause you to, to realize something and he can show you something. And it's so, like, beautiful for you and it doesn't feel like bondage. Uh, I'm going to be straight up honest. Like, I actually love wearing dresses and skirts. So even before um, I started, like, he started showing me that he is not pleasing to him for women to wear pants. And, you know, it pleases him for us to wear skirts and dresses. I was already wearing a lot of skirts and dresses, but I wasn't wearing them all the time. Like, that wasn't primarily what I wore. I wore pants, but I also had skirts and dresses. And especially in the spring, some I like to wear them a lot. But when I wear my skirts and when I wear my dresses, one, I really enjoy it, but two, I feel more feminine. Like primarily wearing them has caused me to feel more feminine. Like when I'm, I don't know, like doing stuff around the house and I am doing stuff like in the kitchen when I'm baking or when I'm out at a store, you know, like. When you're wearing skirts and dresses, your range of motion is like slightly limited. And so you're not like moving like super fast, but you're a woman, right? So if I'm going to, if I'm about to walk into the, the store, right? And there's a guy and he's about to walk in. I'm walking a little bit slower and maybe he'll get to the door before me and hold it because he see me as a lady taking my time getting to that door, right? So I like the fact that I can take my time, it actually forces me to take my time and do things because of my range of motion being limited. And just to um, to highlight how pants came about. So pants came about because of a feminist agenda, right? Women didn't freely wear pants um, like we do now or like most women do now. It was actually like prohibited for women to wear pants. And there was a feminist agenda that basically said that, hey, women want to wear pants too. We want the same range of motion that men have. And so they fought to get the right to wear pants. I mentioned in a previous video, I'm not a feminist. I'm not, 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 not a feminist. I don't like what is done to the, the black or the Hebrew community. I don't like how it's damaged the family structure of the black and Hebrew community by uh, empowering women in a way that has made them feel that they don't need uh, men in their lives, that they dishonor the masculine role. Um, I don't like what is done. The women who are behind the movement, their family structures have not taken the level of uh, destruction that our families have taken. So they still out here, you know, screaming for the cause. But us, Many of us may not even realize the level of damage that is done to our community. So I'm not a fan of it. Empowering women, yeah, but maybe through scripture, maybe through showing them who they are, but not through making them feel that, you know, the the male role is is not important. I don't believe in that, right? And so just a little bit of historical analysis of how that came about. But uh, like I said, I actually really enjoy wearing skirts and pants, excuse me, wearing skirts and dresses. Now, there are exceptions where I do wear um, pants. So like for me, like if I go to work out or something like that, I have my um, like my legging pants that I wear. And then. So when I go to work out, I have a pair of it's like leggings that I wear, but then I have like an athletic skirt that goes over them or like if I go to, um, I don't know, like something where I need to like physical therapy, right? I'll have on my pants and then I'll have on like a skirt. Like it's like a kind of like an athletic skirt kind of like over that just to cover them. And then as soon as, you know, I'm done working out or whatever, I'll just change back to my dress and my skirt, whatever I had on. And let me tell you, to be honest, I can't wait to change back to my skirt or my dress. I actually really like wearing that. So it's amazing how like y'all has <clears throat> changed my desires so that even my desires please him. And I'm not just saying this to like put on like this is really how I feel. Like he's literally changed my desires. So um, that's it with the. Updates. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to continue to show me 
you know, different things. And I, I look forward to it. My only desire at this point, my sole desire is to please him and to do what pleases him. So I've covered just about everything. Um, like I mentioned, taking care of yourself. So being modest does not mean that you don't take care of yourself. As I mentioned, I do manicure and pedicure my nails and my toes. They are in some of the best condition they've ever been since I started becoming more modest. I do still take good care of my hair. I do wash it. I do use a spray that I actually made myself that has a water, rose water, olive oil as the carrier oil. It has peppermint oil, tea tree oil, and lavender, so it's really invigorating to my scalp. I keep my facial routine very simple. I don't believe in using a lot of chemicals. I use, um, we were raised actually not to do that, and so that's why I've never really had many skin issues. I did at one point have a little bit of like buildup on my forehead, like at a point, but that was some years ago. But literally, my facial routine is I get up, I use a hot rag. We were raised to use a hot rag. Cleanse your pores, wash your whole face with that rag. And clean your ears out, get behind your ears, all of that with the rag, right? And then after that, you know, you might use a light moisturizer, but that's it. In terms of moisturizers, keep it natural. I use jojoba oil, um, like a light, a lightweight, nothing heavy. I use a lightweight jojoba oil to moisturize my face, nothing that's going to just clog my pores up. Shea butter, raw shea butter is also great. Don't use a lot of it, just like enough, like a dab of it, you know, uh, rub your hands together really well and moisturize your face with it. It gives you a beautiful, natural glow. So jojoba oil, shea butter, um, before I put any shea butter or jojoba oil in my face, I'll just go like spray some rose water. So literally wash my face with hot water, spray my rose water on, my rose water on, and I'll use either jojoba oil or shea butter. And that's it. Sometimes you might not even need that. If your skin is like oily, you might not even need that because, you know, that might not be good for you. It's winter time, so I don't want my skin to look like this dry. So I do use the jojoba oil and the shea butter. Um, also, you know, I still do like exercise. It is important to not just let yourself go because you're wearing skirts, you know, and dresses. Um, like I said, I do have um, clothes that I wear to work out. Like you don't have to like sometimes you might work out at home. Sometimes you might go walking. You might go wherever you go to work out. But for me, I have a it's like a skirt that goes over my leggings and I'll just wear that and go work out. I go running, jogging. Um, I work on my abs. I work on my glutes. I do all of that. I still fully work out because you need to keep yourself up. It's important to take care of yourself. So don't become modest. And I know this doesn't get said in a lot of videos, but like, it's one of those kind of underlying things that like, you know, people don't, people tend to shy away from modesty because they see women sometimes like they don't look like they take care of themselves, but modesty actually like, pulls you to take even more care of yourself naturally, authentically, and organically. So um, let me see. The last, last thing. Okay, so my comments. So I would say don't force modesty on yourself or don't force it on anyone else if you're already, um, you know, dressing modestly or you're in this modesty journey. Um, but definitely, like, if you desire to know more you want to know like what pleases y'all and what doesn't I would say just seek him like really seek him with your whole heart and seek his wisdom and you know ask him what pleases him and what doesn't please him and he'll show you because when I started like coming into this journey of modesty I would go on YouTube and when I tell you it's so many women that are just like seeking y'all and he's showing them the same stuff he's showing me through different like ways, but like he's shown a lot of women about makeup, a lot of women about pants, a lot of women about covering their heads and all kind of stuff. And so it's not that I'll have my head covered every time that like the whole video when I get on these videos, but at least the part when I'm praying and reading scripture, my head will be covered at that part of the video. 
But I'm not alone. He's showing a lot of women these same things. And so um, he's moving. But definitely, like, pray and, like, seek him and ask him to show you um, what pleases him and what doesn't. Don't be someone who's just like, well, he shows you, but he didn't show me. But you didn't go seek him. Don't be one of those kind of people. Don't do that. Concerning anything, you know, um, go and, you know, read scripture and go to pray to him and ask him to show you. Right. And seek him and he'll he'll show you. Um, and the reason why I say don't push it on anyone, that story that I said I was going to tell at the end. So when I first came into the truth, I came into the truth because of a radical act of obedience um, that I I chose in 2021 and um i'll i'll make this a separate video that i'll actually share like what that was and you know you know how that how that went but um i guess my obedience like really meant a lot to yah uh and that's when he started showing me like so much he started giving me visions and dreams showing me things i never seen before and um you know, just revealing his truth to me. And so that's how, you know, I started to come into the truth. But shortly after I came into the truth, um, I was introduced to uh, a group that met on the phone. And my Ruach was like very uncomfortable the first day. So much so I just like, I just like, like walk away from the call, like turn my phone off, walked away. I didn't even say nothing, just walked away because I was just so disturbed. And uh, trying to be decent, I did apologize and, you know, let them know. And somehow they wooed me in. Long story short, after maybe like three, most four weeks um, or like three, most four Shabbats, because it's only on Saturdays. I called it quits. I was like, no, like this ain't right. I prayed to y'all. I said, y'all, please just show me what this really is. Get me out of this. And um so I think all the people that talked to me and encouraged me and uh, I walked away from that quickly. It wasn't months. It wasn't years. It was like a matter of like three to four weeks. And I was like, or three to four Shabbats. And I was like, uh, -uh. this is not of y'all. This ain't right. But at any rate in that, because of the people I was surrounded by, I sort of, I thrust myself into wearing head coverings. I thrust myself into, you know, not wearing pants. And I had no really, I had no real revelation of it. And I also had really read scripture concerning, you know, why cover your head? Why, you know, dress a certain way? And it felt like bondage. And so when I was no longer, you know, a part of um, that, that group, I was like, head covering coming off, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, pants coming back on, all of that. Like it just... I didn't have any revelation. So um, now it feels the opposite. It feels, I don't know, like I just, I literally love wearing skirts. I be shopping anytime I go to the store, like trying to find some new skirts and new dresses. I love like covering my head. I love how it feels to be more modest and more feminine nature. And so when Yah does a thing, it's beautiful. It says in the word that he makes all things beautiful in his timing his timing his timing his timing is perfect and so um i'm just the way that he's done this and how lovingly he has been working on me is is beautiful and i tell people my father dresses me so the last thing modesty for men so it's not really necessarily for me to tell men like how to dress per se, but a lot of these uh, testimonies that come out are just centered on women. Rarely are they ever centered on the modesty of a man. And I see a lot of very flashy men, specifically men who are in leadership, who are spiritual leaders, who are pastors, and they have on the tight, you know, like skinny jeans that are ripped, and they have on those character glasses that have like the frame with the bright colors around them and the, the flashy shirt. And they're, you know, leading people. And so that's not modest. That's not modest. And 
that doesn't get talked about a lot. It just tends to be women, 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 women. But modesty starts in the heart, right? And modesty is for all the children of Yah, not just women. And so that's something just to kind of think about as man, as a, as a, you know, for men to think about as well, not just for like the sisters to be modest. I don't see that so much in the truth, but if you're not like necessarily in this Hebraic awakening and you're watching this video, you know, do think about, you know, do you need that $2,000 watch? Do you need that, you know, $5,000 pair of shoes and, and all of the flashy stuff, right? What is more important? Because it says in the word where your heart is, that's where your treasure is going to be also, right? So you're stirring up on earthen, uh, worldly treasures, right? And you're flashy and stuff like that. Is that really pleasing to y'all? And is the flashiness of your demeanor of your clothing helping you to convey the word any better, right? And so that's my testimony. And I do pray that this blesses and encourages someone. Um, I'm just grateful for the way y'all is moving. Uh, it's been a very quick journey and he's still continuing to show me things. And I'm just grateful. Um, just pursue him. The best advice I can give to anybody, just pursue him with all your heart um, daily. Continue to ask him to show you what he likes, what pleases him, um, to show you what, you know, what's not acceptable in his sight. And when he shows you, just be obedient. Just be obedient. He is a good, good father. And he, he desires for us to... Um, He desires for us to be on the, the right path. Like it says in the word, he leads us down the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So that's all I have to share. And until the next video, Shalom.